Welcome to H2K Infosys. H2K Infosys is a e-verify business based in Atlanta, Georgia, United States. We provide 100% job-oriented, instructor-led, face-to-face, true live online software training programs. It also includes access to Cloud Test Lab with software tools. We provide live project for you to work on. We also provide assistance with mock interviews, resume preparation and review, and job placement assistance. H2K Infosys is trusted by so many students across the world. H2K Infosys provides world-class services in IT training with real-time project work for corporates and individuals, special IT training for MS students in the United States, software design development, QA manual and automation, performance testing and maintenance, IT staff augmentation, job placement assistance and tech support. So there are so many times where we want to create a string. We end up creating so many strings. So if you're using the same string, it, it does not create a new string. Let's say I have uh, in my class, here, As a string specific of R, even is equal to books after this line, after the execution of these two lines, how many objects get created? Well, Sorry? Two objects. One object. One object. One object. Right? Oh, you said two objects. Okay, I thought ACV something you wrote. Okay. So it will be one object uh, referred by two uh, variables. Yeah, one So see, so both these strings, both these reference variables will be pointing to the same string in the constant. It's also part of your memory. So we just you know, uh, call it as a constant. So if at all you're trying to modify this event of something, right? So A2 is also referring to it, right? We haven't created a new string object or the Java hasn't created a new string object to be more precise. The Java doesn't create a new string object in its case because they both share the same string. If it is ever able to modify it on saying A1, this a2 is not pointing to the right value that it is supposed to, isn't it? Mm. That, that That's more kind of one of the convincing reasons for it. The constant pool is maintained uh, or organized, keeping the memory constraint as we usually deal with, you know, so many strings. And the reusability is more of an important thing that needs to be considered. So we call it as a constant pool. It's still, of course, a part of the memory wherein just the strings reside. But, okay, so what happens after the execution of the three lines? So here we have two objects, right? So, how many objects will be present here? I think we have one object. ABC and ABC is the object, right? So, you can think that whole one object. See, here, sorry, I'm, I'm very sorry. It's only one object. That's my type. Object. Yeah. So, how many objects do, you, do we have here? Two. After this line, we have two objects, right? Let's say if I specify this line, Right here. So, how many objects will get created after this line? One. Once all the time? Yeah, I mean, after this line, because if you say new uh, string, it will create object. If you say string A1 is equal to ABC, uh, it will search in a string first. 
Yes, it, it says it in the constant pool. If it's not present, it creates one yeah. in the constant pool, right? Yeah. So, and here if I'm saying a1 equals equals a2, right? What will be my output? It will be true. Because it's pointing to the same object. We are uh, checking. So, if someone not able to understand it, please talk to me. Stop all of uh, us. Uh, I, I have a confusion here. Uh, Nina. Uh, so here. You, hello. Yes. Yes. Yeah, uh, I have a confusion here. Uh, the string uh, s is equal to new string a b c. That was when when it was uh, after a two. You told uh, there will be two objects. Created after uh, string x new string a b c. See. Right. Here, here when we come here, we will be having two objects. Okay, the three lines of execution. We'll be having mm -hmm. two objects. Two objects here. But if, if uh, I execute string X is equal to new string ABC, then uh, it will be creating an object uh, uh, which has uh, ABC. If, as it, object if it is not there in the constant pool, it creates one. Then what will happen if string A1 is equal to ABC? I'll do. Uh, then what will happen? Yes. Will it it just, into the yeah, A1 just points to the string in the constant pool. It does not create a new one. So it points okay. to the string that's already present in the constant pool. That means it will it will be pointing to the it will be pointing to the string which was created which was pointed by a string S, right? Which is pointed by string S. No. As is see, in this line if there's no string that's uh, present in the constant pool, two objects get created. You understand that? You need to do in terms of that one to add it in the string pool. Sorry? So basically, if you say a new string. No matter what, if it's present in the constant pool or not, it always creates a new object on the key. When you say new string, even if it's present in the constant pool, it creates a new object. So when it's a new string of ABC, there are two things that happen. One, it creates in the constant pool, and one, there is an object that said created. So this line. If ABC is not present in the constant pool, we have two string objects. This line, it's already, it, it points to the same object that's present in the constant pool. Even this points to the same object that's present in the constant pool. So this A1 equals equals A2 is true because they both are pointing to the same object, but S is pointing a different object. In this line, we have two objects that we created. If ABC is not present in the constant pool. So A1 equals equals S or A2 equals equals S. Will be false. This will be false. Okay. So if you want to compare the contents of the string, we use the equals method, right? I think we have discussed this. I mean, any object you want to compare the contents of the object meaningfully, we have to use equals method. And for user defined objects, we have to override the equals method. For string and draper classes, the Java people who have written that they have already uh, overridden the equals method. Yeah, I have one question for you. Mm -hmm. That string as equal to new string and then we did ABC, right? So this will be in the string pool or it will be go in the area of memory oh, for the one in heap, one in constant pool. Okay. So the ABC will be in the string pool, but that as that will be in the area of memory, right? As string as. S, S is a local variable, right? Oh, yeah. It's on uh, stack. Right. Local right. variables are always on stack. Right, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. Thank you. Uh, Neha, one, one, one more question. Uh, my name is Philippe. Uh, system dot out dot print and when I am uh, writing a one uh, comparing it with the equal equal to s uh, is, is there any concept of uh, equal and hash power coming in here? No. When you say equal equal, the... there's no concept mm -hmm. of equal or hash power that's coming in here. It just compares a one and s and it prints it. 
So as you see, this out in the land, right? You have like you know many overloaded methods, right? So it returns mm -hmm. a boolean. It is just printing out, printing it out. There's nothing that okay. I equals a hash code is coming into picture right here. Okay, so it, it, that is just for uh, the selection. The, uh, if I say uh, the sets, the hash sets, and all that, that's where uh, those things come into the picture. Uh -huh. So we have in case they use integer you are asked the question uh, the string s equal to new string and then string a1 equal to abc those are mm, give a false result if you give equal equal matter what will be the reason behind it the reason behind it is they're pointing to two different objects one is pointing to the one in the constant pool and s is pointing to the object that's created on the heap so equals equals compare it returns true. Uh, I mean, returns to true only when both the references are pointing to the same object. It doesn't compare the contents of the object. Double equals it gets true or results true only when both the references are pointing to the same object. It doesn't compare the equality of the object. Equality of the object of you know meaningful comparison between the objects. It's, it's taken care of by the equals method. Okay, so the same answer I gave an interviewer, and he said my concept is not clear. Then what will be the my reply? Sorry, the same reason I gave that interviewer, and he told me that my concept is not very clear. And then after that, he did not give me the explanation. Then what will be my reply? No, see. The reason I don't know what sort of thing, you know, uh, the way you said might not be convincing to me. The reason mm -hmm. is double equals just compare like the references, the addresses. Like, you know, A1 is pointing to an object, it has that address. As it's pointing to a different object, it has that address. So when I compare, when both addresses will be same, when both the references are pointing to the same object, right? right. I mean, it's, it's as simple as that. There is nothing rocket rocket science hidden in it. They are just the references. They point an object, so when they will be equal, then they both are pointing to the same object. Right, but I if I'm giving the same reason and if the interviewer does not get angry, uh, agree with me, he wants me, wants me to get angry. What should I answer him? No, in the interviewer. I mean, no matter what, some, sometimes interviewers are you know. This is irritating, but but still we have to handle them with patience. Maybe they're just trying to check your patience. There are different kind of interviewers that check from a different perspective. Some interviewers they just concentrate on the very best. They ask string, immutable, overloading, overriding, and then end up the interview also, right? Mm -hmm. But it is the same question. It depends on how confidently you are answering it. So if you take different examples and say, if I have string S is equal to just ABC and ABC, so both the strings are pointing to the same one in the constant pool. So both the references are pointing to the same string, then the double equals returns true. But when I say new string, it's a different string object. Although the contents of the string are same, it's a different object. That's the reason double equals returns false. So you, are, you can take examples and you know explain them. But the reason is double equals, no matter strings or any object, it compares the references, right? The address. So it returns to only when both the references are pointing to the same object. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, it has been asked uh, to me uh, uh, in one of the interviews uh, if, say, uh, you have a string as mutable or, say, uh, any of the primitive classes like the integer class or the double class. That would have been mutable. Uh, then what would have? What would have? See, string is more a kind of you know the database URLs, passwords, and all these things we make it. So if at all string is immutable and it was ever tried to override the URLs of the database or using in that password, it's a big security threat, right? Mm -hmm. So and of course an immutable class has to be final because when you extend it, the immutability you can change the uh, you know the concept of immutability, right? And that's the reason it makes more sense to have it as Final. So, like the database URLs and all these things, it shouldn't be changed. String is a kind of, you know, widely used for all the parameters, like, you know, any network connection or database connections and all these things, right? Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And one more the reason we could uh, say is um, synchronization, right? A string is immutable. The same string could be used across, right? I have something which I'm using, which like um, a constant, which I'm like trying to use it across. A string is immutable. We can share, you know, string instance thread safe, right? Mm-hmm. So if you want to go with the thread safe, we go with it. And of the later okay. versions, we have string buffer also. Yeah. Yeah, I think in the case that last version, what was the question? Is the integer or a, a number immutable? Then what will be the result? What will that one be the question? No, when it when if it is mutable, what is the disadvantage? Right. So we're saying it's just see there is nothing like you know this is the answer if you give this answer it's right so it's more about there are different reasons for it it's how we are able to say it and convince the interviewer right so mm-hmm. all these urls or database urls the network connections urls passwords they are all things right so it works more sense to make them as immutable right and what is the reason the synchronization issues So the synchronization issues could also be, you know, string works fine in a multi-threaded environment because it's an immutable object. It could be shared across threads. And one more thing, like as it's an immutable object, the hash code of the string is cached. We can cache the hash code on the string. Because if the string is changing, the hash code, of course, would get changed, and there's no point in caching it, right? So, you no, know, that's one of the reasons people say. So, when you say a reason, just don't say it like, you know, uh, we want to cache the hash code. But, you know, explain it in a more sense, like, you know, cache the hash code, but if at all, if a string is in, not immutable, if someone could change it, there is no point in caching it. So, as in, we have to regenerate it. Uh, Manoj, you were asking something, I'm sorry. What is the hash, hash code for string? We discussed the hash code, right? The hash yeah. code method returns an unique integer on a specific object, right? Now and the hash, hash code, code uh, is, uh, we are using to find a container or a bucket where we are putting the same. Uh, yes. So instead of generating it again or something for string, it's cached. It's, ca- it's cached for string. For a specific thing, we could cache it because it's not going to change, right? Okay. So, what's the question? No, I, I was confused why you're saying a hash code for a string. No, every object has a hash code, right? String is an object, it has a hash okay, code. Okay, 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 on that way, okay, on that way, okay. Uh, right? But like in English, a uh, string, yeah, something like that. I thought like that. Okay. Okay, string a string is also um, an object code. So string has a hash code. Every object has a hash code in Java. So we have the hash code method which returns the hash code on the specific object. So, you know? Yeah. Kind of reason. Save. So can you then the equals and hash code is like it's very important. Not just for the interview, even when we code, it's, it's very important. Equals and hash code equals, we, we just, try, you know, even with experience, we just try to import it. We just try to pass and before we to have the equals method. So it's a good practice to have it when we write any of our user defined classes. So, uh, we, we, we can we're just setting the string and there's a substring. The functionality is like same as the substring which we use in Java. So we're extracting the substring and we just send it here. So I'm trying to replace, I have a string hello Manoj. In that, I'm trying to replace Manoj with Sachin. So when I when I just print it out, my output will be hello Sachin. The replace is replacing the contents of Manoj. But such as so, if it's data, clean, the GSM. 
So my my root string, this hello Manoj, and we are using a replay to replace Manoj with such. And here the contains return two. The ear is contained in the string two. Contains string one is string two. And here we have my name is Chetan, and we are splitting it as an array, and we are using the join. Here we have separating with comma and we are using a hyphen to just join to join them so we we get it using the and we can we have an escape xml so that when we say it it doesn't treat it as an uh, sorry the xml it doesn't treat it just treats as a normal text and it just prints you like this without escaping the text Right, this comes in bold because when you put it in a B, it it, it will be bold, right? But when you escape this example, they just come as normal text here. So sometimes when you want to escape it, you could do that. So the the small about different JSTL tags, the code format, SQL tags, XML tags, and functions. Function what we're learning tomorrow? Your favorite topic. Which one? Spring? Or web service? Unit? Oh. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh, you were the one who was asking, right? I'm just kidding. It's no, your no, favorite Sachit, topic? Sachit was asking. No, not me. Oh, to have J units, they are to the same time, but you. Yeah, but usually we do have like the units at the end. That's like you know, I mean, and saying, and then we we can bond the game. Actually, I found one book. Uh, basically, it says that interview companion, but it's very good explanation of uh, each and every topic we covered until. So, uh, name is it's like seven books. Yeah, yeah, yes, I know interview companion, but it's yes. like uh, yeah, I think for a starter. But it, it takes so much of time to go to each uh, It's uh, like uh, it will explain you. Uh, it it's the, the best, um, you know. I don't know. It's, it's the best place or one to, one to stop for the interview preparation. It is the best. I have to. Yeah, so far, actually, whatever I have like, seen, uh, it is the for, best. For understanding purpose also. Like uh, most of the times, like I was learning Java when uh, when I was learning Java at that time, I I didn't understand uh, what web server is and what what is web container and what is application server and how they are separated and what's the difference is. So basically, they draw the picture uh, how exactly where uh, HTML goes, where server and JSP goes, or where yes. JV is. So I mean, if anyone want to buy it, I just paste the. Uh, it in a chat window. I think I have the soft copy also. I have the soft yeah, copy. They, they have a soft copy like six bucks or seven bucks, I guess. Okay. So, yeah. So they have picture of uh, application server look, how application server looks like, and the structure of work file or dynamic web project and all. Oh, can you download? Oh. Guys, I put a soft copy, and it's like I can—I mean, I can all download it. Probably everything is, is what I was just uh, seeing. But whatever I have it, I'll try to send it. I mean, uh, you, you can just buy the book also. You can buy the book. It's a seven dollars, seven dollars, I guess. Uh, it's on Hulu. dot com. Yeah. But Hulu. trust me, folks, it's it's worth. Seven thousand dollars. It's very good book. I mean, yeah, the book worth seven thousand dollars. Yeah. And basically, um, it's like um. Most but actually, it is if you try to see it in very initial stages, you I mean, you usually get more confused. But after little learning, I advise you to start it. Like some basic. You know, it's it's not that you cannot start it on the first day. You can start it, but you need to have. More patience. They have an explanation, but you know, uh, we need to have patience 
to start on a day one, but you can start it because it was from person to person. But with that book, you can like, understand the minute details of when you design it and all this. I think thanks, Manoj, for bringing the yeah, this one, uh, I mean, uh, I've been using it for a long time. Other thing is like, uh, uh, like people are asking how this equal to equal to and equals and all. Yeah, I mean, it has uh, some vast, I mean, it, it is vast. I, mean, I don't say anything is not useful in it, but for if people who want to prepare so fast for your interview, that book is like little huge. Yeah, but for um, uh, like a basic concept, uh, basically uh, most of the interviewers uh, uh, asking a basic concept in Go Java. You can use that yes. head first. Yes. Uh, and you have like the index where you find it for, I mean, interview preparation is, 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 is something logical that we do. I mean, it yes, should go on yeah. logical. Coding is something different than, it's, it's just you don't need to code. You just convince that you can do, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> No, they they check for attitude. Basically, when I uh, when I'm taking into the, I'm, I'm checking for attitude. So yes, exactly. That's what you know. You can do it. So it's like even we work on nine ten framework. I mean, the next day you might need to work on a different framework which you haven't seen it or used it, right? So it's always the ability to work. It's not that you know everything inside it. Folks, any other questions? So anyone has any concerns in having JUNIS class tomorrow? Like, do you think that's important and you want, you know, you want to show up for two class tomorrow or, I mean, any reason? So you're taking a JUNIS uh, 3.0 uh, or 4.0, JUNIS 4? It's probably JUNIS 4. It's just an explanation. There are some more functionalities that are added with versions. It's just a jar file that we need to include, right? Yeah, that's right, but they, so they, they basically, are different, right? What context? You mean to say they're not backward compatible like Java? Only for the two person, only for the two person, please. No, no, what, yeah, so what I'm trying to tell is in uh, unit three, I, mm -hmm. I guess we have at the rate uh, test. Uh, at the beginning or in JNIT for something like that. So that's you don't have it in JNIT for we have the test annotation in JNIT for also, right? Yeah, yeah. So no, why I'm asking because uh, sometimes it's like uh, people uh, teaching the I mean the old things, not the latest one. That's why I'm asking. Anyhow, you it wanna, make a tip. Make you, a tip you, yeah, you want to have JNIT for that's fine. I mean, I I think I'm using JNIT for actually four point five or something. Yeah. Neha, are you going to teach the Mavi? Teach Mavi? Mavi tools? Maven? M A V E N? Yes, yes. Yes. I mean, I'm planning to provide an overview on the kind of Maven as I think it's fairly important. So actually, I'm doing, I'm using the Maven and I'm uh, trying to connect. Uh, Hibernate and trying to use the Oracle, but the Maven is not allowing me to use okay. that artifact for Oracle JD business. This is me missing artifact, uh, and then it says uh, okay. See, basically, whatever we specify as the dependencies, it should be present in that repository. Whatever the repository that we are specifying, it should be part of the repository. So you should be able to connect to the repository, and whatever you are specifying in your settings.xml. The, I mean, where exactly the repo is present, I mean, that particular jar file, the dependency that you are adding should be present there. If it is not present there, it says missing artifact. Uh, actually, manually I copy and then uh, I try to copy through their command also, but nothing is working out. So, so if you have time, see, in settings.xml, you specify where your repository mm -hmm. is. In your repository, you should be having the specific jar file in the exact location, the package or, you know, the pertaining to the group ID, then only that artifact gets resolved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I give the access to my control, can you be able to figure it out if you know, or it will take some time? I could see it. See, open your settings.xml. You have your settings.xml when you, uh, when you install Maven, right? 
So many of our students have given testimonials on how our training programs are. You will find them on kudzu.com and on our website h2kinfosys.com. On our website h2kinfosys.com, you will also find more detailed information on who we are, the courses that we offer, what each course covers. Also, if you're interested in a demo program, please register on our homepage on the left hand side. Just give us more information about yourself and we will send you a link for a demo class. The demo class is absolutely free. Experience our commitment by just attending an orientation workshop at no cost. Our team of faculty and advisors are here to guide you with the right information. If you still have more questions, please feel free to call us. Call us at 770-777-1269. This is a United States number. If you're calling from the UK, call us at 020-337-1269. 17615. You can also email us at training at h2kinfosys.com or h2kinfosys at gmail.com. Thank you for watching our videos. We wish you a great career in information technology.